After several weeks of tearing down this old ambulance inside and out, the time has finally come where we can start to bring our design ideas to life as we start building up our ambulance conversion. Our intentions are to use as much recycled material in our build that we can get our hands on. And I've got to tell you, the ambulance has been a great supplier of many of the materials we plan to recycle into our project. Naturally, we've got a few more demolition tasks to check off. This panel I'm removing is a great example of something that can be stowed and reused somehow in the future. This light bar can be used in the home or garage as party lights. So we're keeping that as well, because maybe one day we'll have one of those things to hang it in. Hey. Huh? You using the impact right now? No. Can I see it? Uh -huh. For the majority of the build, we had music playing in the background to keep our spirits and work tempo high. Capturing content was secondary to actually doing the work. We also recorded a huge portion of the build in time-lapse mode, which captures no audio. So be forewarned, there will be lots of talking over music in this video. With the demolition done, I started adding insulation to the cab. The goal was to dampen the sound and help with temperature control as well. We used Dynamat products for this, three different types actually. We used Dynamat products for this, three different types actually, including the Dynamat, Dynaliner, and the Dynapad. We covered the floorboard, the ceiling, and the door panels. Oh yeah, we now have Amazon affiliate links. Check the video description for the links to these products and any other Amazon items we mention in this video. Your teepee. <laughs> it looks more like a teepee. <laughs> or something. For insulating the box, we couldn't access the two inch poly ISO insulation foam that we wanted, so we used two three quarter inch and one half inch foam panels to build them out to two inches. We did this by using spray adhesive to join three pieces together to become one. We used spray foam to fill in gaps and taped over the corners with insulation tape. It was a long messy week and it blew our budget up as it more than tripled what we planned to spend on insulation. But what can you do right? The supply chain was pretty crazy during the time of our build so we just worked with what we could access in our short time frame. We knew thermal bridging could potentially be a problem, and we did nothing to combat it, 
but I'm thinking an extra half inch of foam board and maybe some Reflectix would definitely take our wall insulation to the next level in the future. We're not exactly over living the boat life, and we love the floors we put in our previous boat, so we got a roll of Lawn Seal Marine Vinyl Flooring that has a similar Teak and Holly look. Unfortunately, it was cut three inches too short of what I ordered. When I talked to the distributor, the guy wasn't doubting me, but he was shocked because he claims they use a precision machine that rarely makes an error. I responded, that's too bad it wasn't a human doing the cutting. They would have given me an extra six inches of material just to be on the safe side of things. So this project was pushed back at least a week while waiting for them to ship a new roll of flooring. Thankfully, there was no shortage of work to be done when it came to the bed, so that should be enough to keep us busy while we wait on the flooring. For the bed, my number one goal was for it to be built without needing to purchase any additional material. For starters, I snagged up a couple pallets so that I could take them apart and use the boards as slats for the bed. Anyone considering this should be aware of the many potential hazards associated with using no pallets for any sort of project. Check the link in the comments for more information on that. I did not draw the design of the bed, or really any other part of the build for that matter. I'm just going off of blueprints that I've scribbled in my head, and I'm grabbing scrap pieces laying around and deciding if they could possibly work with what I need, like the strip of starboard I'm cutting. Take notice of what the front face of this bench area looks like now. It'll be relevant for the upcoming scenes. So pretty much where I last left off, I cut those pieces of starboard that I ran across the, uh, the top of the bed and then I proceeded to cut out all the, the holes and openings that I wanted on you know the face of the bench and I ran into, uh, just say I ran into some issues with that. So I'll show you what we got. As you can see, that bed is completely opened up. The top piece, you know, is removed along with everything that used to be there. I put my saws in there to start cutting it. And what it was doing is that, you know, the saws were pretty much violently shaking everything instead of sawing. And, you know, it first cracked here. This was our first crack. And then it cracked in other places to the point where it was, you know, beyond repair. It was unusable. So, at that point, I was like, I, I think that, you know, I, I can no longer go along with my free bed build. And I was thinking that I was going to have to end up going to go 
get some plywood. So that had me pretty down um, because I just want to say I had a free bit. So I just kind of, I guess, gave it a rest from there. See what all I can come out with. I was actually, I stopped working on the bed and I moved to start working on uh, where we're going to have our window AC at. And right in here, there was a little center wall that I needed to take down so that the window AC can pretty much, you know, have the full span of this storage. And as I'm taking it out, I'm like, man, that wall looks pretty dang good. So I got the idea right there that I am going to use that wall to be the front face for our bed slash bench area. And here it is right now, getting ready to get cut to size. So free bed project is still a go as of right now. But we'll see, you know, how this thing stands up to the saw. It should be better because I'm able to clamp it down, whereas inside the uh, inside the box I wasn't able to clamp it. So the metal was soft as it is, or you know, just flexing created quite a problem. But we'll see how this goes here. I cut an opening so that we can access the underside of the bench for storage as well as to create a cat suite for the boys to tuck into whenever they like.
We reattached the original wall that came from the Ambo and hung the original shelf as well. But we painted it white to get rid of the non-finished government gray look. From there we covered the wall with 3D wall panels we ordered from Amazon. By now the new roll of flooring had come in. The robot scissor machine didn't give us any extra but at least we finally have the correct length that we ordered. We immediately covered it with protective paper and then the old flooring because after all, the ambulance is still a construction zone. To dress up the wall under the big piece of shelf, I bought quarter inch luon and half inch craft board to create a wine scooting look for this area. To give you an idea of how I was able to build this bed out of recycled materials, here's where we source the materials from. The 2x4s to create this extension came out of our friend's floor from a crappy lanai enclosure flooring job that needed to be redone with concrete.
The silver piece laid on top of it came from the Ambo's old bench face, and the slats came from the pallet. The plywood I'm cutting into a U-shape was left over from the transom repair of the C-Ray we used to own. These will be the legs for the pull-out portion of the bench. I had some leftover material from the wine scooting wall on the other side, so I decided to use it to do a smaller version of the same thing on the outside faces of the bench. There's three of these legs because the bed will pull out in three individual sections to give us the option to kick up our feet while the bench is in day mode. After lots of mock-ups, hold-ups, touch-ups, and cutting up, it's finally time for the bench bed to come to life. Tiff is taking care of the final assembly. I've moved on to wiring up the rear exterior lights so that we can reinstall the large shelf you saw us remove in one of our previous build videos. If you haven't checked those out yet, be sure to jump back to watch the build from the beginning. If you've made it this far, thanks so much for watching. This video is getting a little long, so I'll break it here for now. Be sure to check back next Sunday for part two.